right, uh, 20, almost 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking Wednesday. Still got plenty of time. If the kids are back in school and you got the day off, you might go to the beach today. Look how nice it is up there, right? <laughs> no, it's gorgeous. So you just got to be home before the kids get out of school. It's going to yeah, be a short day at the beach. Anyway, you might want to bring a book. We got one we want to recommend. Um, Gabrielle Zevin is on the phone. She's an award-winning New York Times bestselling author. Her new book is called Young Jane Young, and it's a story about a congressional intern who has an affair with one of our congressmen. Hmm. <laughs> uh, good morning, Gabrielle. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Good. Where are you calling from? Um, Los Angeles. It's oh. gray today. It's, is it gray there? Oh, <laughs> oh my, gosh. my gosh. Yeah, it's not going to rain because it never rains here, but it's definitely, <laughs> it looks like it could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us today. Uh, tell me about this storyline and uh, give us like a movie trailer version of Young Jane Young. <laughs> I'll paint all those pictures with my words right now, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, young, young Jane Young to me is the story of, you know, many young women who decide they want to go into politics and they get an internship and, uh, you know, they end up sleeping with their boss. It doesn't just happen in politics. It happens many places. Yes, yes um, it does, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I had been struck looking at a picture of Monica Lewinsky last year of how young she looked. <laughs> right, 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 and, right. You know, and if she was that young now, I wondered how young she was then, you know. And I remember, I'm a couple of years younger than Monica, thinking that I was very judgmental of her when I was that age. But now I'm 10 years younger than Bill Clinton was at the time of the scandal, and I feel quite judgmental of him, to tell you the truth. Oh, I always felt judgmental of him. <laughs> 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 it's funny how men, men and women look at those things differently, don't they? But you know what? Is it American yeah. men? It's, like, it's almost like the French don't care. Am I right about that? It seems like French people are fine with everything. They're, they're okay. Um, you know, I don't know that they're fine with everything. I think, you know, to me, I don't care what my politician does or who he sleeps with, but I care a little bit when it's an employee. You know, then I think we're talking about something different. You uh -huh, know, then we're talking right. about possibly harassment in the workplace, which is actually different than just having, you know, an extramarital affair of some kind. <laughs> is, that, is that why you named your character Jane Young? Well, she's actually called Aviva Grossman. Jane Young is the name she takes when she, ah. uh, you know, if you think about it, like, it used to be that if you made a mistake, you could just move to another town and start again. Um, but my character can't do that because she lives in the age of Google. So mm, <laughs> anytime, right, right, like, right. she tries to get a job or anything, somebody Googles her and, you know, her whole past comes back, kind of like a scarlet letter or something like that. Um, but, you know, so, yeah, she renames herself Jane Young. <laughs> And uh, she has, uh, and and she has the ability to relate to different generations. Yeah, definitely. Um, the book takes place. It has five different uh, women that tell the story, and they're all different ages. And I was kind of struck by the fact that you know a story is different, just like we were talking about at the beginning. A story is different based on the age you are when you're thinking about it, the age you are when you're reading it, and that's kind of in the book as well. So, so, oh my God, how do I ask this question without sounding awkward? I mean, is this based on any real experience? Maybe, maybe not your own, maybe a friend? Did you, I, I mean, we probably all know somebody who could, uh, who we're close enough to that we know they, they made that, I guess you would call it a mistake. They made that mistake. Well, I think, you know, any, you know, many young women make many kinds of mistakes. And, you know, it's the only kind of person who is necessarily judgmental of, say, a Monica Lewinsky is somebody who can't remember what it is to be young. You know, I remember reading the piece she wrote about uh, Roger Ailes in the New York Times last uh, last February, um, and there were comments under the piece, and most, you know, there were some people that were still very angry at her, um, even though this had happened so very long ago. Yeah. But there was one young yeah. woman, I remember, who was um, an intern at the same time she was, and she said uh, something that I thought was really insightful, which is that... Um, she said all the other female interns kind of felt very relieved that it hadn't been them because, like, the force of Bill Clinton's charisma at that time was so great that any one of them would have been willing to go on such an adventure, you know, because you can't have an affair with the president of the free world unless he wants you to. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, it's not based on my experiences, particularly in politics, but it is based on thinking about my experiences as a woman, um, 
Um, and thinking about why, you know, we aren't sitting in the nation with the first female president right now, too. <laughs> and there are different women uh, uh, politicians these days, and they, they all seem to dress differently. They wear their hair differently. So when you come up with a uh, protagonist in, in your book, she goes through this. What should she do? How should she, how should she look? Right. You know, I think that's true of women in so many professions. You know, I think it's a little tougher to figure out the costume that you're going to wear to to uh, present the job that is right for you. Um, sorry, that was extremely awkwardly phrased. But I remember when I was young, you know, and I'm actually from Florida. I don't know if I mentioned that. I went to high school in Boca Raton. My parents lived in Daytona. Oh, really? But when I was young, I ran for a student council president and I decided that it would be a great idea to wear a man's suit to speeches day. Um, and I wasn't trying to be like transgressive or anything. I just had never seen a, a person become president of anything that didn't become, that wasn't wearing like a man's suit at the time. Interesting. And so I think, wow. you know, and I think it's true. It's true in late night. You know, I think Tina Fey once said it that, um, you know, that the first like female late night host will probably need to, to wear a man's suit because we recognize people based on those things. And so I think it's really hard right, for women. Yeah, yeah. Um, because if you think about it, a female pantsuit is not the equivalent of a man's suit. It does not say the same things at all. Um, so, so yeah. Um, and it, it, is it works definitely for, something it works for Alan. It works for Alan, but she's not. <laughs> right? Doesn't she wear a pantsuit? <laughs> yeah, but it's it does. <laughs> Yeah, she's yeah. like deeply committed to the man suit. Like she's been doing it <laughs> a long time. You know, uh, um, I feel like you have to start early with that if you're going to do that. But I do wonder, like, can you know the person who becomes female, the first female president, like, can she wear a pretty dress that she bought at like an anthropology, you know, exactly. or is it, she's definitely going to have to, you know, wear a suit, you know? <laughs> I think I think you're right, and, and and we have a lot of lady politicians in Florida. We got one running for mayor now, don't we, Robin? Yeah, we do. And and I guess they have to think carefully about what they wear, where a man doesn't really have to give it much thought. Just wear a nice suit and you're ready to go. Yeah, I think it's, you know, there isn't a uniform. And, and on a larger sense, there isn't a playbook for how you become a female leader. You know, we have, and, and, and it's not just sort of in real life. It's also in television. We don't have, you know, as many examples. Whenever you see a woman who's right. a president in a show, it's almost like that means it's a sci-fi universe you know, or you, something like that. I wanted to interject something interesting. We had an, uh, a hypnotist on one time, and he basically said the same thing, <laughs> that if he goes on stage to hypnotize people, like in, a, in a, a demonstration, if he doesn't look like a hypnotist, if he doesn't have that tuxedo or that half tuxedo, whatever he called it, if he was just wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt, nobody would be hypnotized because you have to believe that the person is able to do what you what they say they can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is such an interesting point. I completely I think that's probably true. It's crazy that that's true for hypnotists. I mean, just imagine what the burden is when you're a president, you know, and I think <laughs> like when occasionally when, you know, people would call Hillary Clinton unlikable, what they really meant was that they were very unused to seeing something like that. <laughs> You know, it's unnatural to them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so uh, Aviva Grossman, that's who Jane Young is, right? And, and we That's who she becomes, yeah. <laughs> and, and, we, and we follow her through the book. Um, uh, how do we get the book? You can get it at your local bookstore. Hopefully you still have some <laughs> in Ocala. Um, we do. Or you, can, or you can order it from uh, somewhere online, but it's even better to go and to, you know, see your bookstore, check out what else is there, you know. <laughs> and, do you have a, and do you have a website of your own that you can direct this to? I do. I'm GabrielleZevin.com, and there's all sorts of things that are there um, of varying degrees of interest. <laughs> Excellent. Are you, related to, are you related to Warren Zevin by chance? It's an unusual name. Well, he's a Zevon, so maybe we're related, like, way back in, oh, like, really? okay. some kind of, like, you know, Russian shtetl or something like that. But <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we're, like, currently related. Zev means wolf in Hebrew, so I guess we're of the wolf people. But Wait the, a minute. Zevon and the iron. I just yeah. found you on Amazon. <laughs> You've been on the show before, and I love one of your books. Elsewhere, you do. elsewhere. We, do you remember? Oh, you don't remember being on our show, but I remember you. Mm -hmm. Do you remember really? when, when you were promoting the the book elsewhere? I do remember that, but I don't know if I. I don't remember. I'm not sure. I do remember being on the show. Oh my gosh, that is a that is a wonderful book. Okay, now I now I'm putting two and two together here. Uh, yeah, that was that was over like ten years ago. I mean, probably 2005. Yeah, yeah we've, that, been that time. Time. we've been doing this. Yeah, we've been doing this show a long time. <laughs> 
Um, you guys are survivors. Congratulations. We are, sur- <laughs> and so are you, apparently. Oh, my gosh. That, yeah. <laughs> everybody, you got to check out Gabriel's Evan. I haven't seen the title of this book or the cover in so long. I, it makes me want to look at it again. Look at this. Look at you. you got so many great reviews. Yeah. Um, let me see. So the new one we were talking about is Young Jane Young. I'm going to click on that one. I, f- I found that on Amazon is what I did. I went to your website. Oh, no, no. I, I, I typed in your name on Amazon is what I did. You're yes. number one. It says number one. Did you know that? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> it says, it says it, right underneath the stars, it says, number one new release by Gabriel Zevin. Oh, uh, that's good. That's nice to know. Well, <laughs> I try to not look at that stuff too much because I don't want to, you know, you can you run the risk of becoming kind of obsessed with those numbers. <laughs> I don't think it's good for anyone. <laughs> Gabriel, thank you for being on the show. I, I was a fan before I realized I was a fan earlier in the in the conversation. Thank you for being on the show it, with the us. The conversation got so exciting. Your voice got so warm. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing changed. <laughs> well, uh, thank you again. And uh, everybody else, just go get the book, Young Jane Young. And uh, we'll take a little break. We will be right back. <laughs> 